Hello, everybody, and welcome back to The Advisor with Stacey Chalemi. And today I'm very excited because we have a very special guest. It's Dave Ferguson, and he is a martial arts expert, and he's also part of our podcast community team. He has his own podcast on our channel, so definitely check him out because he has such great advice. He works a lot with men, and he focuses on improving their overall life mentally, physically, spiritually, he's there for you 100%. And he has great tools, advice, strategies to help people get to the best part of their life. And today he wants to talk about how life begins at 40, how you can reverse your age and how you can feel the best possible in your life. So Dave, it's a pleasure to have you back. I always love hearing you speak. You have such great advice. You know, tell everybody a little about yourself before we begin and let's get to it. I want to know how life begins at 40 and how to reverse your age so I can tell my husband because he's driving me nuts. So I need help. <laughs> well, you know, it is a quite a challenge. It can be a real challenging time uh, through the decades of our midlife. Um, and, and thanks for having me today. It's always um, very exciting for me across the end of the pond to get a chance to share my message with, um, you know, your wonderful audience. Um, it's always one of them things that when you first start, you know, you want to share that message. You want people to know what you're doing. You want to help people. And this is obviously one way of, of getting that message out there. So I really appreciate that. Um, so, yes. So for myself, how did I get into this middle age um, supportive space, really? So our fundamentals are to support men to rejuvenate through their midlife, um, through the three fundamental pillows of regaining their strength, flexibility and well-being. Um, I came to work with this group, some foreseen, unforeseen circumstances, um, when I realised that we, and at the time myself, needed it the most. Um, because... You know, we don't often plan these things. We think they kind of ha happen naturally. Yes. And a lot of the health issues, for example, that we do suffer decline from at quite a slow rate. Right? And there's lots yeah. we can do about that. Don't worry about that. But it does happen, you know, and whether that's kind of our sort of white matter or whether it's our risk of, you know, um, a variety of illnesses such as... Um, heart episodes or strokes, they do increase throughout them decades. And um, it can be a real shock to yeah. us. And I myself personally suffered some health issues around um, uh, cancer, uh, testicular issues. And it was just something I wasn't prepared for. I didn't expect to happen. Right. Um, and it, But if I knew what I knew then, having to go through the period, going through it, if I knew the importance of seeing the right people first, sharing that information, how to detect particular illnesses like that, and if I had knowledge on the success rates mm -hmm. and prevention through that particular illness, um, it would have made life that bit easier. Yeah. And I come to realise that most middle-aged men didn't know things like this. Right. And I remember first sharing my particular experiences. And then, of course, several other men started to share their particular experiences um, quite willingly. So I knew there was um, a space for that level of understanding to help prevent or to help manage or even some um, situation. We could even reverse these particular health issues, challenges, and conditions. They also fall into lifestyle as well, but I'm sure we'll come on to that as well, Stacey. I think it's it's so important because I think a lot of times people, uh, they don't know what's happening really. Uh, they notice that all of a sudden at a certain age, their body starts to decline. They notice changes. They're not really sure what these changes are. And they they're confused, you know, and, that, and it happens for both men and women. And, you know, your body starts to decline, you, be, you start to become deficient in, in certain areas and you're feeling it. And, you know, some, for some people, it affects their moods. For some people, it affects their energy level. You know, there's a whole list of things. And then, you know, and people sometimes get more susceptible to certain conditions. And, you know, they just don't know what's going on and they don't know how to approach it or who to go to, you know. And for you, you know, you mentioned that life begins at 40. And, you know, for a lot of people, they start getting a little depressed around that age because they start to see the difference of how they felt in their 20s versus their 40s. And, you know, 
how can you reverse your age? How do we begin to, you know, to look at ourselves as we see this, the changes start to occur and how do we reverse it so we can feel the best possible we can't, uh, you know, person that we could possibly feel within us mentally and physically and spiritually. Absolutely. Well, there's a lot, lot to cover there in that one um, particular point. But if I sort of maybe isolate a few particular um, factors there that we can improve and develop during our, our, our mid age. So, I mean, if we talked about uh, brain health, for example, so uh, around we lose around 5% of the old white mass up. Uh, yeah. per decade around just before 40 actually if you want to be really fussy but let's just say 40 so is a comfortable generalization um we have about 100 billion cells interconnected anyway so there's yeah. still a few there which, that's not a necessary problem but it does slightly reduce per yes. decade but through particular aspects of dynamic uh plasticity mm -hmm. through learning new learnings and that could be through things like training could also yeah. through sort of academic and reading programs new learning you can actually rebuild new neural networks yeah. right into your 70s and 80s right you it's know so you're not necessarily reversing that right white matter but you are managing your overall brain capacity in a more positive way right if we look at the increase in heart episodes for example Yes, they do increase over over the um, obviously over the decades, but the evidence is very clear. Just a tad over eighty percent of heart episodes can be prevented through lifestyle changes. Wow! So again, you could be talking things around nutrition, certainly mm -hmm. exercise, yes, um, and and uh, various um, health changes smoking alcohol would be advisable to reduce possibly stop right and these things can be presented if you look at muscle loss sarcopenia yes we lose muscle loss around one two percent um every year but rebuilding muscle is a relatively simple process right now sometimes it may need to be backed up by again um improvement in nutrition maybe there may need to be some supplement support as well not necessarily but it's a relatively easy to regain that muscle mass maybe it's slightly different you probably might not need as much mass depending mm -hmm. on your kind of shape to some extent but you might not need as much mass as you um as you mature but very easy to rebuild right right up to your 70s and 80s again Yes, that's so true. And do you find sometimes that men are more embarrassed to come out and ask for help? A lot of times I hear that it's the wives that are more proactive, or, you know, it's the females in their lives that are, are pushing them to do the right thing, or go to get help. Because a lot of times, you know, men feel embarrassed to mention that they're, they're experiencing different changes in their in their bodies, and they're afraid to reach out to go and get help. Did you feel like that when you we first started to notice changes in your body were you a little iffy about talking to people um yes a little bit um because i again i probably didn't think it was going to happen to me right right um so when it did and, be, and particularly because when it comes to the martial arts i had done them for quite a long time as well so they had sort of not covered but you know kept me in reasonably good shape and they did to some extent as well i think it's often relatively speaking but you set your own standards. Yeah. So for me, I probably was a little um, wary to discuss that. Ironically, on well, not necessarily ironically, but on the sense of the more health concerns, I'm usually quite open to getting professional support and advice. If it's something yeah. I don't know, and I've done my research, and I don't know enough about, I will find someone who does know something about it. You know, usually right. would be a doctor, but not always. Um, so kind of two sides of it to me i find that a lot of some of the clients anyway that get referred through from other people like their wives it's usually end up doing it for other people and some people could do that some to some people that work a small amount but for most people it doesn't and they won't usually last the the, the, the full route because maybe they're not quite ready yeah. yet um so i think for men they are more likely actually to get help or seek support for things like keep fit, be stronger, be fitter, be healthier, but yeah. potentially less likely 
when it comes to some of their health concerns that they're quite fearful of. Right. What we usually find with a strong percentage of our clients is they come to us with quite um, linear dimensional requests, you know, to lose the belly fat, to, to big, bigger shoulders, bigger chest, you know, stronger yeah. thighs, that type of thing. Um, and then it's often through the assessments and maybe throughout the deeper part of certainly the total rejuvenation mastery program where yeah. they start to be a bit more open about maybe some of the emotional psychological uh physiological health concerns that they've got and then we could maybe dig a little more specific into that so yeah I, I find it more more common more open with maybe some of the physical issues um but less open maybe with some of the more emotional and health issues so it seems like a lot of times people have to just have a trust. Once they gain that trust, you know, they might come out and they start work with you on, on physical issues, but then they they develop a trust. And then once that trust is made, then they start opening up about other issues. Yes, very much so. Because, um, you know, obviously I'm presenting myself, I'm in a place, thankfully, where I, you know, feel pretty happy, pretty healthy, pretty strong in myself, which, you know, I'm really grateful for um but then i don't know if it's just blokes but mm -hmm. i think certainly blokes anyway as soon as they see that then they think that's the perfection anyway and everything's really easy and it's always been fine and it's a piece yeah. of cake um and i think that's where sometimes that personal story is quite helpful um you know when i explain some of the troubles and challenges that i've been through you know yeah whether that is with my health um mental health physical challenges you know and that sometimes can help um help the guys to open up a bit what are some of the, the the first steps when when someone is starting to feel a difference in how they feel and they start you know in order to feel the the best you can possibly be um what is the first step someone needs to really focus on is there is there like a beginning stages like do you work them through a process to get them to the point where they feel that they're their best personable self Yes, um, but it kind of depends on individuals. Um, some people need, to, you know, some people sort of, you know, you can hardly hold them back and you sort of need to give them quite a bit quite quickly. Um, and for others, you really need to be quite gentle and introductory, um, particularly when it's often a confidence thing. So we would start quite slowly and be looking more the physiological side of things, maybe start to just open them airways up a little bit. Yeah. Um, some really basic breathing techniques. I think I touched on um, before, maybe moving on to some more diet, diet, dietary diet, breathing. I always struggle with that, um, which is more through your stomach rather than your chest to sort mm -hmm. of relax things a little bit before maybe we start going into that strength, um, which could sometimes be a bit more tense, if you like. Yeah. And you don't want to be starting tense to then be going into that type of exercise. So there is a few different models of um of really getting things going um and even from a physical sense um around 10 15 percent of our clients now which was really didn't plan for this at all um start off with chair-based exercise or moderated chair-based exercises mm -hmm. and that kind of is partly due to some uh, issues maybe with mobility or, or or strength but it could often be a bit of a confidence issue as well as as much as anything just sort of Maybe, you know, could be uh, yes. quite obese, obese, certainly well overweight and maybe just lacking a bit of confidence rather than the real physical issues. Mm -hmm. So that's another example of around 10, 15 percent actually kind of starting to that kind of chair based right. support group. Is there a certain type of mindset that do you like to, that works best that you'd like to train people so they can really get start to, you know, because there's, a, you know, when it comes to health, a lot has to do with the mind, you know, how we feel, you know, plays a big role on how we how we feel overall, you know, mind and body. So is there a specific type of mindset that you try to instruct your clients to, to have that you feel is very beneficial for people, especially men in their 40s and older? Yeah, so as I said, we 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 often deliver that mantra throughout the um, a lot of our interventions around that prevent, manage, and reverse, and even reverse, um, and that's really important because every challenge that the men will face or are facing already 
each one of those challenges can be delivered through that particular mantra. So wherever you are now, you could potentially, if you are suffering with diabetes, we can maybe help you to manage that better. Right. Can't get rid of it necessarily. Um, uh, we can't, sorry. Um, but we could potentially manage it better. Right. Type 1 diabetes, with a change in nutrition, you could potentially reverse that. Yes. You may have to live with it, but you can potentially reverse that. So we're always working under that mantra. But again, it, it, we have a lot of neurodiverse individuals. So how you push and pull, you know, it can take a while to work out exactly where that lies. Yes. But we just feel with them three mantras that in each area we can do something. We can support you in some way to help you start that rejuvenation journey. And while we have that positive mindset, we also recognize that and we do we do build this in that you will have the odd setback it's not mm -hmm. going to be the one or two percent maybe just pretty much fly and everything goes perfect yeah five percent not much more than that you will have some setbacks so instead of that journey right to the top you'll get to the top but sometimes you'll have some jagged yeah steps mm -hmm. um you know um and some people don't like to hear that in the beginning but in general they kind of appreciate it in the end yes you know, mm -hmm. because you can then manage their moments when maybe things aren't quite going right that little bit better. Um, you know, even I've, I've previously worked with, you know, the criminal justice system and even in the um, the substance abuse space, yeah. you know, you're talking, God, I'm going to probably forget there's that figures now. I think it's 59 relapses the average drug user would have before coming clean. Wow. And while we might not be dealing with some of them extremities, some of the issues are quite deep. And you may have to go through at least half a dozen yeah. of them setbacks during um, some of the particular interventions. But that's part of it. Don't go into that self-loathing spiral. It will happen. A little bit more aware of it can reduce that likelihood of just too much that self-loathing and mm -hmm. just spinning that around into a slightly self-positive spiral. So what do you think are some of the best ways when it comes to not reaching the, your potential goals that you set in your head and it takes longer, you know, so people don't feel disappointed and they don't feel like they failed or they don't stop, you know, what are some of the things that you tell people or, or you have people do so they can realize that it comes with the territory that basically, you know, when, when you're trying to better yourself, no matter what you're doing in life, nothing always happens exactly the way you plan. And there will be the ups and there will be the downs, but when they do have the downs, you know, what are some things that people can do to encourage themselves so they don't stop trying to help themselves become that better person? Yeah, no, absolutely. And we do rely on some of the aspects of positive psychology for that that work. So we do have at the end of each module um, some positive psychology uh, worksheets um, around positive affirmation. Mm -hmm. And again, it depends on a kind of the, our client's kind of personality style. But right. we ask them to do things like doing recordings as well. So where they're at, and it could be from various levels. We could talk about the physical self, but we yeah. can also talk about that mood, that tone of voice, where you're at. And that really works well alongside some of these um, positive psychology exercises, because when you do have them down moments, and it's a pretty natural thing, you have to say, it's just really hard to see out of it. Yeah. And it depends on some of your past experiences and, and, and lots of other factors. Um, but one of the biggest shocks is when you then look back on yourself a week, three weeks, two months ago, how you looked, how you sound, how you were sleeping, the yeah. tone in your voice, the sparkle in your eyes. There are such fundamental differences. And that, while might not stop some of them um, drops, yeah. It can maybe get you out there a little quicker right. because it is, it, it just, it, 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 it's quite shocking. It really is. And um, it's, I always love it. That's one of my favorite things. Yeah. I always thought before it'd be, you know, the big muscle before or after pictures. But for me, it's very much um, the sparkle in people's eyes, the smile, the humor, a bit of snap back in their step. Yeah. They are the, the things that I, yeah, absolutely. Um, they'd give me that kind of return high, really. Do you, do you think of having a journal and writing down your progress or setting goals for yourself is really beneficial? Yes, I do. I do. I mean, it certainly suits my style. 
and some of the guys don't seem to take to it too much um but most seem to get some benefit from it again. And it's very similar to what I just mentioned about it gives you some sort of um, chronology of change and improvement in so many different ways. So I, I think it's very beneficial and, and, and it seems quite, um, it seems to work pretty well. Do you find that there's a certain age group that when they start to feel the changes or they start to go through their their hormonal changes where everything starts to, you know, they don't feel the same? Is there a certain age range or is it different for everybody? Um, I mean, there is some difference, but I think if I had to be general, if I had to generalize, I would say it's um, early 40s mm -hmm. where there seems to be it's loosely termed andropause. Yeah. Um, and there's some debate about how real that is. Mm -hmm. um, but well, I think I it's think, real. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I would say so as well. And certainly what I would say, label or not, around that period, through, so middle age, if we, depends on your measure, but let's say 40 to 60. Yeah. And I would say around early 40s to late 40s, 43 to 47, something like that, there seems to be a serious drop in mood, well-being, outlook, loss of identity now there are some social factors when you talk about um child care relationships yeah sort of leaving the, the home and things like that um separation and divorce and things like that all quite common at the same period so you know sometimes it's difficult to pinpoint exactly one thing yeah. but i would say that particular period you know and even death by suicide you know, mm -hmm. you're, you're talking at some of the highest ends during that period so i would say absolutely yes and then in the 50s, I'm not saying there aren't some of them issues, but potentially they're not quite as pronounced. Right. I, I've noticed also, like when I did a, a lot of writing and I spoke to a lot of men and women, one of the things that I found, too, is that when men start to go through their changes, they notice erectile dysfunction. And that put a big, um, you know, um, what's the word? I guess, you know, uh, it really hit them hard where I'm they're down, uh, but probably not the right. Term. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I you know that's a good one I like that and you know so they you know they felt like their manlyhood was kind of like swiped away and and you know they didn't know how to handle it but there's many different things too that you know men can you know handle that situation of erectile dysfunction there's lots of you know doctors that will handle the situation there's different foods you know you know that they suggest that you could eat and 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 also go into maybe like a functional medicine doctor they have different procedures and different things that they do now for, for men, because, you know, when a lot of times when I would, you know, speak to men in that age range of 40 to 50 years old, that was one of the main things that, you know, that they really um, were having problems with. And and they were totally embarrassed to say anything. You know, most men, you know, didn't want to come mm -hmm. out and, and say anything. And it was, again, the, the wives that were trying to find the information out for the men. <laughs> but, it, <laughs> you know, what's your intake on that also? Yes, no, absolutely. And it seems to be something on, on the growth um, again, part of the bun um, across most of most nations. So something's going on there. A lot of people talk about the nutritional input and some pesticides and, and that type of thing. Again, I wouldn't, I can never over comment on things until I've really done that work to yeah. say for sure. Um, but what I can say, and actually, it's in. It's actually a, a, a sort of cheeky reference to it in my new live webinar coming up at the on the 29th, which is Black Friday. Um, over this part of the pond, I think it's actually slightly different for you guys, um, is it seems to be quite common. It seems to be um, increasing. What I can say, and that's why I highlighted it in, in, in the, um, the ad, was that absolutely some of my clients, a, a bit of a nod and a wink, have certainly mentioned that they felt more vigorous um, right. for want of a better term so what i would also send there and again it's quite tentative but i would say there's definitely a kind of blood pressure blood flow link mm -hmm. which would make some sort of sense in general general terms so because i couldn't tell you what difference i've made specifically but yeah. i know when it comes to things like blood pressure i would there's a new heart uh stroke risk tool the nhs have and I direct my clients to that as one of the kind of, um, they don't have to do it, but right. I prefer if they do as one of the kind of health measures, um, uh, you know, because it's very important. And blood pressure, it's, it's just one of those things you can't really 
know for a fact what's going on there. So right. it is quite important to measure that quite regularly. So I would say there's potentially a blood pressure issue there. So we don't directly aim at that, but it seems that certainly in some cases they absolutely get in the benefits of, um, I'm going to say, the exercise, the training, and that increase in blood flow and possibly increasing quality of oxygen may be, a company, mm -hmm. may be beneficial there. No, yeah, I, I agree with you. And I think, too, I think when it comes to the, our hormonal changes, both in men and women, we start to decline. And, and I, you know, there's been a lot of also information that, you know, that the, the lack of testosterone in men, you know, the decline over the, the years has played a big role. But they have found that, you know, exercise, diet and, you know, eating certain foods you know, also helps with the le your levels of testosterone and even seeing right. like a functional medicine doctor and, and, and getting everything examined and seeing where you're lacking and where you're not lacking and, and trying to balance those areas, you know, could be very helpful too. Cause like, it seems like, you know, there's a lot of issues, you know, when it comes to, you know, your brain, your mood swings, your, um, you know, the way you can think a lot of people, to, you know, talk about fogginess and, and not being able to, you know, think clearly. And then like you said, said, you know, a lot of people, a lot of men experience heart problems around that age in their 40s and 50s. And then the, the lack of exercise or the lack of motivation. If you don't get that exercise in, you're not going to be able to get your body to that that point where you could actually have enough of strength to be able to be vibrant and live your best life. That's well. right. Absolutely. Yes, with, without a doubt. I absolutely agree um with, with their points there um and it is that vicious cycle and that's why it needs to be a holistic answer really because yeah. um you know just going to the gym is is not going to quite cut it at this stage where potentially it, it may have uh in your 20s and 30s you know yeah. but i look at each stage and that's why i'm always a bit upset that middle-aged guys don't get looked after because we know you wouldn't you know, until kind of adolescence, maybe teenage, before you would get youngsters to start weight training. You right. wouldn't start six or seven or anything like that. That's fairly obvious. We know in Asian countries, they adapt their martial arts in the 60s to around a more Tai Chi fluid yeah. relaxation process, which makes far more sense for the needs of 60, yes. 70 year old classes. So why wouldn't we be doing something slightly different for middle age when we just talked about all these different changes? It yeah. makes no sense to me. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Now, how did you become so passionate about wanting to focus on middle-aged men and, and helping them improve their overall health mentally, physically, and, and spiritually? Like, what brought you to this passion? Um, so there's, there's, a, there's a few, really, and I'd love to say I was really altruistic, but I think part of it was the, ex the experiences that I went through over the now the 15 years of being a middle-aged um, man. And partly my martial arts journey. So, so if I start with the, the, the first side, for me, it was going through bereavements, uh, suffering the, the, the health conditions, which was completely unexpected. And, and of course yeah. I thought I was the only person in the world um, that was happening to, mm -hmm. um, really struggling at work, losing a bit of my self identity and confidence. Yeah. Um, and I'm not saying these, some of these things can't happen at different stages of your life, but they can often be quite pronounced at this stage yeah. of my life. Um, and then knowing other colleagues that were going through similar experiences. Um, and then the martial arts sort of came together because I've all done martial arts for many years. Right. Um, but uh, during the COVID period, I couldn't go to the gym anymore. And so I started sort of to reduce, let go of my prejudices and sort of bring all these different martial arts together instead of battling about which was the best one right. to start to address particular areas that were changing rather mm -hmm. than the set forms I was doing at the same time. Right. And then when I started to do that and experience some of these changes, yeah. then the people at work were then noticing the changes. And then I started to share that evidence with them for kind of just a WhatsApp video. Terrible WhatsApp video, short like I'd been kidnapped or something. <laughs> um, that's what I first started to share. And people started to get the benefits from that. Right. Um, and then I knew and it, it, it just worked out so well because I was at a period where I wasn't getting the satisfaction from the job and part of that was because I wasn't know the new the difference I was making to help people's lives change part of my job as a public servant 
Right. And all of a sudden I found this new thing where I knew how to help people change. Yeah. And I thought I'd have some of that. <laughs> you yeah, know, yeah. so that's how it kind of developed from there on, Stacey. Oh, I love it. I love it. And, you know, and tell everybody about the importance of really trying to prevent problems before they occur, because sometimes we can get symptoms and we tend to overlook our symptoms or we're in denial. But when things start to change, you know, you know, how do you feel about, you know, taking action right away and being proactive? Yeah, so, I mean, prevention is a massive, massive part um, for me. We can't see everything coming, but we can see a whole lot of things coming. And there's a couple of ways of doing that, really. One is just being recognizant of your, your age and some of the risks. It's not doomsday, but it's just that awareness. Mm -hmm. um, then you've got the aspects of maybe just if you are in tune with your body to sometimes recognize the symptoms, because usually it will give you signs. Right. Um, and it's kind of how tuned your body are to how much you recognize in signs, to be honest, but it usually will. And then you have more functional, functional measures in place, because as much as we have a real thorough assessment and analysis of each one of every one of our clients, we still recommend um, some of our NHS uh, tools and measures for middle aged men to use, whether they join our program or not, right. um, because that is another way of identifying risk of particular illnesses that you can then do something about again usually through lifestyle changes before yeah. medication in most cases um to reduce some of the risks so i did mention i think the heart and risk heart attack and uh, stroke screening tool uh, mm -hmm. it's around four measures including your blood pressure height weight and age i believe mm -hmm. um, and then they will give you a measure and then a following set of advice so that's a really relatively simple way of um, helping to prevent particular them conditions. We also have an NHS health check for 40 plus year olds. They recommend every five years. Yes. I would say every year personally. Right. Um, and they usually won't refuse it. Sometimes it can depend on the region. That measures things like heart disease, stroke, uh, stroke risk, kidney disease, uh, diabetes risk, T2 diabetes risk, and also some particular dementia risks as well, because this yeah. is the big topic of the day. Mm -hmm. And what everything we're seeing now with a lot of the most recent research is the importance of early detection yeah. to help potentially, we're not quite there at a the stop stage, but we're certainly at that slowing down stage. Yeah. And there are certainly certain types of dementia that there are some signatures 15, 20 years before. So right. there are some really good blood tests now, some type tau protein blood tests that could pick up some high risk around 15, 20 years before the onset. I know that's a bit scary in one side as well, but it does mean that you could start to manage that devastating condition, particularly way, way better from that stage. Oh, I agree totally. I think it's very important that we we monitor it on a yearly basis. You know, there are certain tests they say, oh, you could take it every couple of years, da, 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 da. but I think it's very important that we keep on track because within a year, things could change and you don't, you know, and you know, it depends on your body. It depends on what's going on, you know, and, and the, the signs, you know, sometimes, like you said, aren't always there as prevalent. And so by getting checked and, and keeping up with all these things, you could, you know, you could actually, you know, save yourself if something occurs, you know, if you start, if they catch it in time, they could reverse it, fix it, you know, whether, you know, rather than waiting, you know, two, three years to take another test. And then all of a sudden, you know, all these issues that you never had before are suddenly there. Yeah, and, and and the thing is with health sometimes, particularly if you have a large health issue, it can build up inevitably and, you know, and then impact on your mood and your well-being and yes. your nutrition. And again, back that sort of spiralling uh, prophecy, really, yeah. you know. Um, and while we can't stop everything, as I said, there are lots of things we can certainly prevent or manage better. Oh, 100%, 100%. Now, you're going to be doing this webinar. Can you tell us a little about the webinar? Absolutely. Yeah. So this is something I've been really looking forward uh, for a while, really. Um, it's taken quite a lot of planning, but we're ready. It's going to be a part of a new series, really. So while I've done recorded webinars before, which are quite helpful, there's no doubt in my mind, and we'll find the benefits of this, that that live webinar enjoy, it allows 
um, the guys to sort of interact on a live basis, not to wait for an email or a chat response, you know, mm -hmm. directly there. We can start to discuss them issues, a lot of the needs and challenges that we have, what we got in place, lots of free resources you could access on the day. And I thought being Black Friday, I had no choice. I had to offer a special discounted deal for, yeah. um, for anyone who joins live. They will access a special discounted deal. Not going to tell you what it is yet. Um, you can only uh, find out and access by joining live. And that's on. So I don't think, I think it's a different time to you guys. Our Black Friday this year is the 29th of November, 12.30 p.m. And that will be UK time. Right. And I think uh, in, in the United States, I think it is, um, we have it on the, we have it on the 29th also, actually. Oh, brilliantly. Excellent. I wasn't sure if that message would cut across. So I'm well excited it, it has then. <laughs> and yeah. and I know, won't punish anyone for the time differences absolutely <laughs> fine. Long as you join the live one, absolutely you will get them full discounts available and also um when it when it comes to your services what are the different services that you provide so our main service is or our flagship program is a total rejuvenation pro program which expands through 12 weeks um and then i've got a brand new app being developed at the moment so there is some crossover with material but there's a lot more short punchy courses um, for people maybe who are maybe not sure maybe just want a bit more of a taster right up to the transformer re rehabilitation program and also we have a brand new suite of chair-based moderated exercise as well that'll be on that new app as well so the two options there either just go through to the website uh, daveferguson.com or just contact me through dave.ferguson at sky.com and you can get any information to either the main programs there or the new, any of the new app-based programs. Many of them with free seven-day access as well, so you can't go wrong with that. Oh, wonderful. And if you had to take today's conversation and you wanted to focus on some important factors, what are some of the things you'd like to emphasize to the listeners today? Well, for me, I appreciate some of the challenges that us as middle-aged men have. And you could argue they're even more challenging than they have been for, for um, well, certainly in my, my lifetime. Maybe, maybe not. But I think for me, the key messages are, whatever them challenges are, we can help support you with them, whether we can prevent them, whether we can manage them that just a little bit better, or yeah. even help to reverse some of them. The help and support is out there. Um, recently, there was a government report there was no specific support for middle-aged men, but there's lots of us in this space who recognize that different, recognizes the changes and yeah. recognize the support that us guys need. Yes, that, that's those are important factors. And I, I think people are now realizing, men are realizing that they, they have, you know, these issues are prevalent and that, you know, they occur at specific ages and there's more information starting to come out and they're, they're, they're taking action because, you know, they, you get to a certain age, you don't want, you don't want to reverse and, you know, go backwards. You want to be able to stay young, feel vibrant and be able to age naturally, but feel your best possible. Absolutely. Absolutely. In preparation for that kind of final latter stage of your life, you know, if exactly. you can live that fairly healthy and alert within reason, the difference between, you know, the alternative is right. is um, immeasurable. Because we can't go back to our 20s, but we, we can make ourselves feel young by taking care of ourselves and doing the right thing and keeping a strong mind and a healthy body and putting some exercise into your body and keeping, you know, really being able to just, you know, overall take care of your body and prevent illnesses from occurring. You can really live a healthy, vibrant and, you know, really the best possible life ever, you know, and because we're those are the years we're supposed to we're supposed to be at the best years ever, you know, when you go into the and 50s and so forth so why not make the best of it and learn how to do it you know so i'm so glad you're you know you know showing people how to do it and you know and if people aren't in uh your country you get you can get all this information on the internet and they can participate no matter where they are globally correct absolutely yeah absolutely Wonderful. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show today, Dave. I really enjoyed this segment and I look forward to our, our other conversations that we have. And thank you so much. Oh, it's been a pleasure. Look forward to the next time we get already. <laughs> you have a great day.